Hello everyone, my name is Captain Jack and welcome to Space Engineers. With the release of the game, many of you have been asking me, Jack, how exactly do we get started in the game? Well luckily I'm going to create this short little tutorial video today to get you a good head start in Space Engineers, whether it be survival or creative. We're going to start off survival and tell you how to start a basic survival world or instruct you on how to actually learn the survival steps and uh, do it that way. So join us today as we go through this little short tutorial. Let's jump into it. Okay, quickly before we begin, if you do want to play multiplayer, the easiest way to do is click join game over here. You can find a server or you can join your friends over here in the top right. Now typically I actually run two public servers, there's Camjack Official 1 and Camjack Official 2. You can come and join these servers via the Discord link down below. So if you want some new people to play Survivor with, come join our little friendly community, we would be honoured to have you. Alternatively you can host your own dedicated server, but I'll be going over that in another guide. So if you would like to see the multiplayer hosting guide, let me know your opinions down below in the comment section. But you want to see how to start a survival game. Starting survival is pretty easy, just go over here and click new game. Bam, there we go, you're brought to the new game screen. Now we do have three scenarios for you to choose from, or you can create a custom game. First off, the scenarios. The first jump is number one, and this is kind of like a mini campaign for Space Engineers. It gives you a little bit of a story, tell you how to do some certain features in the game, and walks you through a bit more of an explosive effect. Quite cool, I'd recommend it, I personally found it fun after like 3000 hours in the game. On the other hand, if you want a walking uh, guide on how to do survival, kind of like being held by the hand and led through, learning to survive is the one for you. Learning to survive is brand new with the release of Space Engineers and will basically teach you all the steps to become a master at Space Engineers survival. Whether you want to learn about production, remote controls, weapons, refineries, assemblers, you can do it in learning to survive. Even a Space Engineers a veteran like myself actually found it quite interesting. So no matter whether you're a new player or a returning player, you are going to find learning to survive quite helpful. Alternatively, we also have Never Surrender. Now this is a bit more of a hard challenge, so if you think you're quite cool and you're, you know, an OP space engineer, you are going to want to try and Never Surrender. I personally found this a challenge myself, and I think it provides some great gameplay. So soon, uh, we're going to try and do one of these on a stream. But basically, Never Surrender is you have to protect a base against waves of drone hordes. They get harder and harder. You have to build new and creative ways to, you know, um, essentially defeat them. It's quite fun, and I would recommend it. However, if you are like me and you don't exactly like doing things by the book, aka learning to survive, you're going to want to go and do your own custom game. So I'm going to walk you through that. Over here we click custom game. Now you've also got a bunch of planets you can start on. You've got the alien planet, crash red ship, you've got earth planet, empty world, green stations, etc. You've got a variety of things you can start on. Today we're going to be starting in the star system map. So we're going to click star system. We're going to name it uh, Jack Survival Video. There we go. And also the game mode is survival. We don't need to put a description world unless you've got many and you want to be detailed. Online mode, I'm going to keep it offline today as I've got no friends to join me, sad times. And uh, I also don't want anyone randomly dropping in in public mode. But if you want to survive with friends, simply just switch to friends mode like that and then invite them to the game and they can join you. Now, advanced features. I'm not going to be touching mods today. However, if you would like me to do a dedicated tutorial on how to use mods within Space Engineers and make sure they all run and set up properly, let me know down below in the comments. Going quickly to advanced settings, I'm going to tell you how to configure the world in a more advanced setting way. However, if you just want to jump straight into survival straight off the bat, just skip to the timestamp marked on screen or in the description now. Advanced settings. Character inventory size. We're keeping this the same today. We're keeping all of the top stuff the same. I don't want to adjust this just yet. Uh, environment hostility. Considering I don't want to be beaten to death by raining asteroids of death, uh, I'm going to keep it on safe. However, you can switch to different modes here if you want a bit more of a challenge. Asteroid amount, I'm going to go for a normal density. If you're running a low end machine, I'd recommend going infinite none or low end destiny, sorry, density, as uh, that's basically going to save on performance a bit more. Sound mode, I'm going for arcade today. However, if you are more of a man of realism or lady, then uh, realistic mode is for you. World size, I'm going to go unlimited. Again, if you're on a low end machine, maybe scale that down a bit. Again, here we go to view distance. This is how far you can see stuff in front of you. I'm going on 15km. However, if you are on a lower machine, then 7km or 5km is for you as it is more performance friendly. Respawn ship cooldown is irrelevant to our current stats. However, I am going to set the time. Actually, no, I'll keep it at 2 hours today. I was going to set it to 1 hour, but I'll keep it at 2. Objects, doesn't matter. Now, here we go. Max ship size, max blocks per player and total PCU. If you run a B system like myself, just set the block limits. It don't really matter to you in that way. However, if you're running a more sort of lower end system and want to, you know, performance is key, then uh, make sure you configure your ship size and blocks per player correctly, as that will help you not go over block limits and therefore keep more stable performance. Max backup saves, I'm keeping at 5, but you can set to whatever you want or you can set to none. 
Optimal spawn distance, considering we're in an offline world, this is irrelevant and therefore does not matter. If you're playing a multiplayer world, this will play a little bit of a better factor, and I'll show you that later. So, what am I going to do with the advanced world settings? Well, for myself, I'm turning on Enable Spectator. This is simply so I can capture some cinematic angles while in the world. Show player names, I can keep that on. Thruster damage, I like a challenge, so I'm going to keep that on. That basically means thrusters will damage blocks placed in front of them up to a certain distance, but some people like building in creative and such, so they typically turn it off. Other tools and stuff, I don't know if I need anything on. I'm not enabling wolves or spiders as they're freaky, but uh, I'll keep the drones on and I'll keep everything else on. Other than that, I think I like everything. For those who are wondering why I mentioned progression, it basically helps you go through Space Engineer Survival a little bit better by teaching you individually about each block. I'll show you more of it when we jump into this world. Okay, we're all ready to jump into Space Engineer Survival now. Let's get started. Okay, here we go. We're inside the Space Engineer's world. Now today, I'm going to be doing Earth-like survival. I'm not really a fan of a moon. I do like it, but it is quite hard at the same time. So maybe we'll come back and do that another time. You've also got Europa, Mars, Titan, and the alien planet. But we're doing Earth-like, so let's click Respawn. And here we go. We're deploying to the planet's surface of Space Engineers. 13,000 meters and dropping like a rock. I think we're going to have a bit of a difficult landing here. Hopefully we don't land on the edge of a cliff. That could be quite embarrassing, but here we go. And parachutes deployed. Gently does it. We're descending down to the surface. Very nice. And we've landed. Alright everyone, welcome to the Space Engineers world. We've landed here in our respawn pod. So let's hop out. Hello, there we go. We're walking around now. And uh, we've got a very nice view. I mean, look at this. This would work brilliantly for a screenshot of a minute. You can also see another planet up there and obviously the sun. But yeah, look at the view we've got. I'm going to enjoy building like a little facility over here. Excellent. Okay, well let's get started. The first part of Space Engineers, particularly of a new survival update, is we need to actually mine stone. That's because our respawn pod comes equipped with a survival kit. Tabbing into the survival kit here allows us to produce ingots for stone. So we need to get started and produce some of these. So let's get digging. Equipping our drill number three, we can practically dig anywhere. So I'm going to start a mining hole over here. Now I'm just pressing my interaction key to pick up the blocks as well. One thing I will note, at this early start in the game, you are going to want a lot of stone. Unfortunately, it's one of those games, the starting part of Survival in Spaces now is a bit grindy. So yeah, all of this stone, uh, yep, we're taking all of this. We need it all. Let's pick it all up, and also we can start digging down until we get to some proper stone. The deeper you go down, the bigger the rocks get, essentially, so you can start picking up a little bit more. Uh, the deeper you go down, which is quite cool. A few little information about the drill. If you want to dig out some wider areas like I'm doing right now, you can obviously click left here and this will mine stuff for you. But if you want even wider, hold down right click and bang. Look at that. Wider space as well. Ta-da. And also no ore drop. So if you're like me and like to dig out underground bases, holding down right click is going to be the easy one for you. All right, let's make sure we're getting all this stone. We're going to need a lot of this today as we've got a lot of stuff to build. There we go. Right, I'll show you this. We've got stone. Now I run around to the back of my survival pod here and I put the stone into survival kit. Ta-da! Already in production is my ingots. They're already being made. I think I should be able to add two more. Oh, there we go. We've got a few more making. I f Am I pushing the limit? Oh, I've still got some more. Okay, right. I don't think I... Yeah, I can't produce that one anymore. How I do have some extra stone. Is that enough? No, it isn't. Okay. But we have got some starting ingots here made, which is brilliant. So we've got iron ingot, we've got some gravel, nickel, and silicone wafers. Or wafers. Uh, so what are we going to build? Let's go to basic components. Now I want to build like a small sort of starting platform to get myself set up on. So I want the basic assembler, a windmill, and a refinery. So that's what I'm going to build in this video today. Starting off with that, I'm going to need some steel plates. So let's make sure they get built. There we go. The survival kit is already building the steel plates for me. It's prioritizing what it can build over what it can't. For starters, it needs more stone to actually build the ingots at the minute. But don't worry, we'll come back and get them later. I also want one interior plate. And uh, I can't produce any more iron, unfortunately, which is fine. Now, where are we going to start this? I'm thinking just putting... Let's use the jetpack a minute. Putting, like, a little base over here would be a good idea. Let's do that, then. Uh, we'll start here. Like, a nice little base veranda. There you go. Let's put three blocks down. Now, one thing I'm going to do as well is I just want to build a small sort of tower facility going up here. And if we think, Jack, what are you doing? Don't worry, because I'm going to put the wind turbine here. Bang. So there we go. I know I'm going a little bit fast at this point, but I'll explain what I'm doing. I've started my little base structure here because um, my plan is I'm going to stay here and basically operate from this facility. What I'm doing is building a windmill a little bit higher up so it captures a bit of a height difference and therefore gets more wind. That is going to be my power generation for today. Alternatively, I could go for a solar panel here, but uh, I'm just going for wind power as I think that's a little bit more useful in this current version of the game. Uh, there you go. I'm going to tear down that steel block a minute as I don't need it. But we're also going to put some stuff on here eventually. 
So awesome. We're going to need to mine some more stone in a minute. And I've just literally fallen in the mine as I said that. That was quite funny. All right. So stone, I say, is very key and important in the starting area of space engineers. Is you're going to need a lot of this for the survival kit, which is quite cool. And obviously, our starting blocks are the survival kit and the oxygen generator, which you can see inside the respawn pod. Uh, the oxygen generator will give us some ice, hydrogen, and a little bit of oxygen as well. Oh, one thing. I always forget to do this. I had to re-record this earlier, a certain part of it. Press J will unseal your helmet. No, you only want to do this on the Earth-like planet, as this is the one which has a stable atmosphere low enough to support oxygen. So yeah, um, don't go and unseal it on the moon like I did once. It was uh, quite embarrassing. You can also see the game is actively auto-saving us as well, making sure we don't lose any of our progress. Right, let's put some more stone in here, and we can make a few more ingots. So I'm going to put 10 in there a minute, and we're going to go get some more stone. Like I say, at this early start of Space Engineers, you are going to find you're going to need stone quite a lot, as uh, that is the key to survival. Very nice. Okay, let's pick all of this up a minute. Now, one mod I would love to include in basic survival is uh, Easy Inventory, which allows you to... So it's not Easy Inventory, it's Automatic Ore Pickup. Uh, I was thinking of another one, which allows you to actually pick up ore automatically to save me spamming the key to do it. Right, let's chuck a bit more stone in here, and we should be able to get production on the go. I also want a couple more steel plates, so let's quickly do five of them by doing left click. And uh, I think that should be it for the minute. That will give me enough of them. There we go. So what I'm going to pop down over here is I want the basic refinery for number 6. I've got this one. There we go. And I'm going to pop that there. And I'm also going to put the basic assembler on this side. I just need to find its connection port. Where is that gone? There it is. Okay, that can go there. Boop. Basic refinery is all hooked up now. So the basic refinery and a basic assembler are here. This is the next step up in terms of production in Space Engineers. I already have my little survival kit over here, which you can see in the back of a respawn pod. It can produce a selection of components and tools. However, it can't produce everything. So I'm now going to need to start making these two blocks here. I've already got a power generation source almost set up there. I just need to weld up the wind turbine, which we're going to do now. But for the moment, I'm also going to need to focus on these guys, as they are quite important. So let's get our steps underway to actually build the wind turbine. What does it need? Jetpacking up here, I can see we need... Uh, 10 interior plates, 8 motors, and 20 construction components, and some girders. Let's get the basics underway. So, I need 10 of these. I'm going to need 20 of them, and uh, 8 motors, and some girders. Let's get that under production. And also going to need a lot more stone as well. I'm going to time-lapse some buildings some stone in a minute, so don't worry if it speeds up. If you're currently playing along with me, basically pause the video, then come back. Okay, so I've just mined all the stone ready to actually build the wind turbine up here now. So using construction components, motors, I've also got some girders, interior plates, computers and displays. This should be everything enough to build the wind turbine, so let's give it a go. Up here, have we got everything? Okay, I was missing another 30 interior plates, but it's okay, it should work without them. And let's give it a weld up. And there we go, it's now functional, excellent. We've got our wind turbine operational now. This essentially means we now have power for the grid which we're actually going to operate on. Obviously the respawn pod's got a small battery inside, so that's how it keeps its power, but I need a constant source of power for my new grid, which is going to hold my basic assembler and my basic refinery. You can see there, the wind turbine is now spinning. Excellent, we've completed stage one. Now let's move on to actually getting the basic refinery and basic assembler operational. For these, we're going to need a variety of new things, including more computers, steel plates, and construction components. So I'm going to need to mine a lot of stone and get these operational. So uh, join me back in a minute when I'm hopefully making some headway. I would recommend basically pausing the video right now and going and mining a lot of stone, as that is what we're going to need. I don't know how much we have available at the minute. Oh yeah, it's going to be a challenging one. Go pause the video and come back is my best suggestion. Some quick hot tips while I'm mining down here, you can press L to turn on and off your headlights on your engineer suit. You can see it inside, I've got them turned on at a minute, I've also got my helmet unsealed. Also, if you dig down to a deeper rock level, you can see I actually begin mining bigger rock pieces here. These help out, meaning you don't need to pick everything up, and they uh, do end up being quite helpful. Just so you remember, trying to get trapped down the mines, that could be quite awkward for yourself. Now the only downside to the starting process of Space Engineers, particularly in this survival mode, is that it does get a little bit long-winded after a while. Particularly you can see here, I'm having to mine quite a lot of stone at a minute, and as you can see here, running back and forth to the survival kit does get a bit tiring. You can see here, it is slowly producing things, but probably not as fast as we want it. That's why we're transitioning over to the basic refinery and the basic assembler. It will also allow us to build sort of components which we currently do not have access to. 
Now, one little thing I want to walk you through here a minute as we're currently waiting for that to refine is the progression system. As you can see, if I press G to open up the block menu, there isn't a lot actually here if you've seen Space Engineers normally. You usually have a jump drive, a few other things active, maybe the wheels, the thrusters, they're not actually here. If we tab over to progression, you can see I actually have to unlock a lot more. So when I eventually build the basic assembler, I'm going to unlock things like lights, the master assembler, interior turrets, spotlights, and the medical room. Basically a lot more to complete my base, ship, facility, etc, whatever you want to call it. Obviously unlocking the steel armor block when I weld it up, I'll also start to unlock curved blocks as well. Interior walls, as soon as I build them, I can unlock things like the ladder, the passageway, the windows, panels, stuff like that. Basically a lot more. Personally I can't wait to unlock the basic refinery, as I also unlock drills and things like that and the ore detector which is great news that means we can finally drill AK more stone and actually dedicated ores as well. While stone may work for us at a minute getting base ingots and stuff like that through the survival pod uh, it's actually wiser to go and actually mine the dedicated ores itself so we need to get to that level and fast. Okay so while it's currently producing we do have some motors, construction components and computers. Let's see what we can go and weld up at a minute. So we need more computers for there. There we go 80 in there now which is brilliant. We still need the steel plates though and construction components. All right, we should be able to get a few more of them. That shouldn't take too long. Let's go over here and order. I think we need 30 construction components, isn't it? So holding down control, I can order in lots of 10. And there we go. I'm also going to chuck some more ingots in there as well, as uh, we need to mine some more stone to support those steel plates, as we're going to need a lot of steel plates to get these two machines up and running. Now one little thing to point out there, if you see a very unknown signal is currently dropping down to the planet. That actually contains a few supplies and an exclusive skin for your engineer as well. As you can see at the minute I'm not actually wearing one, but you can get some skins like the cow print or the badger helmet or I think it's the um, like gold chrome outlook as well. So you can customize the engineer quite a lot. If you go over to his pods, journey over to him and actually go find him, you can actually go and retrieve those supplies as well. I would go over there but I'm running low on hydrogen and don't actually have a ship or vehicle at the minute so I'm going to wait. But you see, I've got 40 minutes to actually make my way over there, so maybe in 40 minutes we might have something. I'm not sure though. We'll have to see. Anyway, let's make sure this is getting more stuff under production. Yep, looks like we're getting a lot more in here. But I want this to make sure it's prioritizing other stuff beforehand. Are we giving it all the stone at once? No, we need some more stone. Okay. Back to mining it is. Like I say, the starting bit of Space Engineers is a little bit tedious in my opinion, but it does need to be done as getting stone is quite important. Now, while waiting for new resources and such, one thing I am going to do is I'm actually going to take the thrusters off of a respawn pod. A few people wouldn't actually recommend you do this, however, I'm not going to make use of the respawn pod much more, nor am I actually going to use it as a ship. So I'm going to start grinding down the thrusters here, and then we can actually use them to construct different parts of our little facility over there. So let's get grinding down these atmospheric thrusters. I feel it's a good choice as it allows us to get started and have a bit more of a base, uh, you know, from the start. Now, there's a couple of different starts you could do in Space Engineers. I prefer building bases like this, you know, stationary. However, I know some people prefer building like mobile bases. So maybe that's something we could do this in, you know, like that in this little mini series we're currently doing right now. Again, if there's any sort of other things you'd like me to go through in Space Engineers, whether it be how to set up a multiplayer server, how to stage little cinematic fights or anything, then simply let me know down below in the comment section. There you go, we need another... Oh, not many plates now. We should be able to get the basic refinery operational. Still need a lot for that basic assembler though. Let's see, how far are we getting in here? We can put some V's in here as well, which is good. I don't need the computers on motors at the minute. I just need the steel plates. Oh, we've got a few. Okay. Right, we might be able to weld this up now. There we go. Steel plates. Basic refinery is almost online. We might be able to put more stone in here now to start this refinery. There we go. By building basic refinery, you've unlocked new blocks. So we can check the progression system now, and it should show us. We have unlocked a new set of blocks. Here we go. So I've built a basic refinery and as you can see I've unlocked the ore detector and the drill along with the assembler and also the bigger refinery. I can't wait to show you this as that is quite a lot more powerful. But we do need to unlock a basic assembler so we can get this new production going. Uh, so let's see. I need more stone. Okay. This shouldn't be too much. Let's go mining again. Now we're picking up this extra stone down here right now as the other survival kit is currently in progress of refining everything. I'm going to put some in our basic refinery here and see how this handles. Now obviously we're powered by the wind turbine up there and I think we're actually overloading the power on it so we might need some more power essentially. How's it doing? Yeah I think we're going to need more power. So we're currently outputting 1000 watts for refinery. Oh it needs 1000 kilowatts. Oh yeah we might be overdoing it a little bit but we did manage to refine all of that quite quickly. Okay so how's our steel plates doing? Excellent we have another 18 of these. Are we still producing stuff? We still need a few more. Okay we're going to put some more stone in there a second. 
We need three more, actually. Okay, we're on a good start. If I take the iron from here a second... Actually, did I pick that up? No, I accidentally clicked the nickel instead. Curse my bad mouse. Okay, right, let's put the iron back in the survival kit. Can we get started on making those? Yes, we can. We're making those steel plates again. Excellent. That means I can bring this system online. Now, I actually could do with, like, a couple of solar panels as well. That is something which might be a good idea. But also some more wind turbines would also be quite cool. So let's get those steel plates operational and we can see how much extra power I could probably put up. There you go. Steel plates are built. Let us build this up quickly. And we should be almost completing the basic refinery, which is good. The basic assembler is now complete. There we go. By building a basic assembler, you have unlocked new blocks. Ta-da! Okay, so we now have our two key systems made. Let's look at the new blocks we've unlocked. In progression, we can see at the top, basic assembler. We've now unlocked what I spoke about earlier, the interior turret, the assembler, the lights, and also we can go down and forth and unlock more stuff as well. Fun fact, with the larger assembler, you can actually include yield and upgrade modules on it. You've got speed module, yield module, and power efficiency module. We'll get down to more of that in probably another video, but for the moment, we have constructed our basic base, which is looking quite good. And also we have the assembler over here as well, which is looking very nice. Now, what I do need to do is I want to produce small steel tubes. So I'm not sure if I can tell it to do this just yet. Probably not, because I've stolen all the iron from it, so I need to mi mine some more stone. I forgot, I put all the iron in the survival kit. So now we can actually start, you know, making some more headways. We've got the basics actually done. So I'm probably going to end off this video here once I show you I can make more stuff in these grids now. But uh, yeah, I think this is a very good start for Space Engineer's survival. And hopefully it's introduced a lot of you on how to actually get started in the Space Engineer's world. So you can see here, we put the stone in here again. And look at the speed it does that. Now I'm currently overloading my power. You can see at the top of the grid there it's flashing uh, red and green. Basically saying you're using way too much power. It can't work properly. Which is a bit of a shame. So uh, hopefully we can build a few more wind turbines. Maybe a couple of solar panels and then eventually a reactor maybe. But you can't find uranium on planets. So it might be a long time before we build a reactor. But there we go. Welcome to Captain Jack's little survival base. I think this is looking good so far. We've made a very good start in Space Engineer's survival. Hopefully this has helped a few of you out in learning the ropes of space and survival. Remember, if you're not too familiar with what I've done here, you'll feel free to rewatch it at any point and stop and start it. If you're still getting a little confused about certain areas, then I heavily recommend the learning to survive scenario as that'll give you a deeper understanding of specific features within the Space Engineers universe. Okay, so maybe you want to start a creative mode world and not really a fan of survival. Don't worry, I've also got you covered. Simply go to new game, custom game, Select any sort of start. If you're doing creative, I typically do empty world, but you can choose anything. Go to empty world. We're going to name this uh, Jack Creative Fun Mark 2 because I had to re-record this. Don't tell anyone. Also, we're going to select creative. If you want to do it with friends, again, select which mode you want to do. I'm doing offline. If you want to select mods, then obviously select your mods there. If you'd like me to do a dedicated video on that, let me know. Going to advanced. You're going to want to play with some of the settings here, but not everything. You can start a basic setting if you want to, but if you want to spawn in ships and workshop, maybe a couple of Imperial Star Destroyers, some droid landing crafts, or you know some other crazy contraption you've looked at and thought, I need to play with that, you may want to disable block limits. This will simply allow you to spawn in bigger ships which exceed the Space Engineer's recommended size for grids, so I recommend disabling that one. Also, if you're playing with creative mode builds, you know, fancy looking ships, maybe disable thrust of damage, as sometimes they will harm the build. Sometimes I'm filming cinematic so I also disable sun rotation as I don't like to see that and uh, I think that is everything I need to disable here today. See there we go. Excellent. Okay I click OK. Now I go to start. Bang. Welcome to the creative world. Pretty straightforward and simple. I'm in a space in this universe here. I've still got the asteroids turned on. My little character's floating around here. Hello. Uh, yeah it's, it's doing things pretty cool. Now say I want to spawn in a ship. Really easy. Just click F10. It brings up a blueprint screen. Hmm, what ship do I want to play with today? Have we got any fighters? What have we got available? Um, let's see. I've got a few of mine. I've got some of Venoms. Have I got one from the workshop? Oh, here we go. I think this is modded though. Let's see if I've got an unmodded fighter. Uh, that's an atmospheric one. I don't want to spawn that in space. Uh, let's bring in Blinky's TIE Fighter. So if you're a Star Wars fan, you're going to like the first order of TIE Fighters. Here we go. Pretty straightforward and simple. Bang. I've spawned in a TIE Fighter. Hop in the back, and hey, I'm now part of a Star Wars universe within Space Engineers. Creative mode's pretty straightforward and simple, so if you want to play more of this, then uh, simply follow the tutorial I've outlaid there. It's quite fun. Anyway, I'll leave you on to the outro of the video. So as I mentioned before in the video, you might struggle running Space Engineers on your current PC system. Don't worry though, I might have a solution for you. I'm actually sponsored by Shadow, which is a cloud gaming system. Let me tell you a little bit more about it. 
I'm going to recommend Shadow Cloud Gaming. With Shadow, you can stream a Windows environment to any device, including PC, Mac, or even a smartphone. I've tried it, it's quite fun. I personally use Shadow to run Space Engineers on my MacBook Pro while traveling to events. I was actually using it last week while over at the Space Engineers launch event and was playing the game live when the game was being streamed. If you do decide to check Shadow out, be sure to use my code in the description for a great discount. I've also got a dedicated video on running Shadow with, through Space Engineers on a Mac PC in the description below, so make sure to check it out. This could be a good solution for you. Many thanks to Shadow for sponsoring the channel, they are amazing. In the meantime, I've been Camjack. Thank you for tuning in to the Space Engineers tutorial today. If you would like to see more tutorials from myself, such as maybe a multiplayer hosting one, talking about where you and your friends can set up a multiplayer session to play together, or more some expanded tutorials into the advanced sections of Space Engineers and maybe the modern community. I heavily suggest you comment those opinions down below in the comment section, and if you'd like to see more videos from me, I encourage you to click subscribe and like on the video. It's been greatly appreciated bringing you this extra detail about the Space Engineers universe with you today, and I hope I can continue to share it with you. I've been Captain Jack, thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time. Goodbye.